This video provides an introduction to Fuel Cell, Scribner's intuitive, comprehensive, and flexible user interface for Scribner's Fuel Cell test systems. With Fuel Cell, you can control and record all aspects of fuel cell operation and testing through a simple, easy to use program. Use built in experiments and scripts to generate simple or complex measurement sequences and procedures. Select the Fuel Cell program icon from the desktop to start the program. The program can be run in demonstration mode from any Windows computer. Download it from www.scribner.com to get started. This is the main window where users spend most of their time. Let's go through the main sections of Fuel Cell Interface. There are three primary buttons at the top of the window that turn on or off the cell and humidifier heating, fuel, and the load. A blue button indicates that the function or action is off. A red button indicates that the function or action is on. For example, if the fuel button is blue, then purge gas is flowing to the cell instead of reactants. When pressed, the fuel button will turn red, indicating that fuel is now on, and reactants, such as hydrogen and air, are flowing to the cell. Both fuel and the load must be on in order to draw current from the fuel cell. Below the three primary buttons at the top of the window are four large display meters showing parameters related to the fuel cell. The cell current and the cell or stack voltage are always displayed. The two blue display meters show user selectable parameters. Hover the cursor over one of the blue display meters and right-click to change the displayed parameter. When right-clicked, a list of available parameters is shown. The available parameters corresponds to the list of parameters on the right side of the window that have a check in the box next to them. Note that only the checked parameters will be recorded in data files, so if it is important to you, then make sure to check the box. Graphs and alarm windows are displayed in this area of the main fuel cell window. To create a graph, select Graphs and choose the type of graph to be created from the available options. Multiple graphs can be displayed simultaneously. How graphs are organized is selected from the Windows menu. Graphs can be cascaded, as shown here, tiled vertically, or tiled horizontally. Multi-axis graphs permit plotting of multiple parameters on a single graph as a function of time. Multi-axis graphs open in a new window, separate from the fuel cell window. Plots are color-coded to help identify each graph parameter. More than one multi-axis graph can be open at one time. The background area allows for manual control of the fuel cell operating conditions, such as the cell temperature, humidifier temperatures, and reactant flow rates. Select the Setup Cell button to open the Setup Cell window. The Setup Cell menu is used to configure the software and test system for cell properties such as the cell area, number of cells in the stack, cell temperature, maximum current, minimum cell voltage, among others. Select the Setup Fuel button to open the Setup Fuel window. The Setup Fuel menu is used to configure reactant-related properties, such as the anode and cathode humidifier temperatures, which determines the reactant dew point and, along with the cell temperature, the relative humidity of the gases at the fuel cell inlet. Higher humidifier temperatures correspond to higher gas dew point or water vapor content. If the humidifier temperature is the same as the cell temperature, the relative humidity of the reactant gas at the inlet of the fuel cell will be 100%. Reactant flow rates are also defined in this menu. Flow rates can either be fixed, such that the reactant flow rate is constant and independent of the cell current. The flow rate can also be load-based or stoichiometric-based, meaning that the flow rate is a function of the current produced by the fuel cell. Current is directly related to reactant consumption rate based on Faraday's law. Therefore, load-based or stoichiometric-based flow rate is generally used when performing polarization curves. Test systems that have an auto multi-gas selector unit will also display gas selection options. In this example, the test system has been configured with hydrogen and nitrogen on the anode. Air, nitrogen, and pure oxygen are the available gases on the cathode. Simply select the radio button to change the gas type. Test systems configured with the wet-dry humidifier bypass option will also show this option in the setup fuel menu. In the dry state, reactants bypass the humidifier and are sent directly to the cell. Therefore, the gas is dry or non-humidified. In the wet state, the reactants pass through the humidifier and therefore are humidified before heading to the fuel cell. Simply select the radio buttons to switch between the wet and dry gas conditions. 
The wet-dry humidifier bypass capability is required to conduct membrane mechanical durability studies that rely on rapid cycling between dry and supersaturated operating conditions. The current, potential, or power can also be manually controlled by selecting the desired control mode, entering the desired value, and selecting apply. Experiments are listed in this section. Select the New button to create a new experiment step. Fuel Cell includes all of the common experiments types that one would expect in an electrochemistry-based software program, including open circuit, constant current, constant voltage, and constant power. Scan current and scan voltage experiments are commonly used for polarization curves. Change Cell and Change Fuel experiments allow one to change the cell and fuel operating conditions as part of a sequence of experiments. For example, you could change the cathode reactant type from air to oxygen or change the cell and humidifier temperatures. The repeat loop is used for creating cycling type experiments, such as a voltage stepping based break-in protocol. Experiments are easy to set up. This experiment of a scan current experiment will perform a current controlled polarization curve. The scan will start at zero amps, which is equivalent to starting at open circuit. It will step at two and a half amp increments to 50 amps, with each step lasting three minutes. Both vertex currents are unchecked and are therefore ignored. The scan will terminate if the cell voltage drops below 0.3 volts during the polarization scan. The reverse scan or terminate scan options can be used to prevent overpolarization of the fuel cell. Separate files can be created for each experiment step if given a unique file name. Alternatively, data from multiple experiments can be combined into a single data file by checking the append box and using the same file name for each experiment step. In this example of a voltage cycling sequence, it is desirable to have all of the data in the same file to facilitate post-experiment review and analysis of the data. In addition to putting the open circuit and constant voltage steps inside a repeat loop, each step uses the same file name and the append box is checked. The estimated duration of all experiments in the list, as well as just the selected experiments, is indicated at the top of the experiment list. In this example, it is estimated that the total experiment time is 1 hour and 20 minutes. The three selected experiments, each one minute long, total to a runtime of three minutes. There is much more to fuel cell. In a future video, we will cover the important topic of instrument configuration. Fuel Cell is a flexible, user-friendly program that supports your fuel cell research needs. To learn more, download and run Fuel Cell in demonstration mode. Fuel Cell can be downloaded from Scribner.com.